Jesus said something that bothered me in my early walk, and to this day it still bothers me in some ways, although I'm probably a little more content with it now than I ever have been. But in discipleship, which is what we do with utmost, we want to press on you know, to the high calling of Jesus Christ. We want to move forward in our relationship with God. We want to develop that same attitude that Jesus had and that same perspective that he was able to look upon the world and to literally say, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. That's why we want to use our utmost for his highest, because really, we want to be like Jesus. And if you don't, then utmost might not be for you. And discipleship might be something that you choose to use a different means or a different methodology. But in getting real on Vidivo, we want to talk to ourselves about how we can press on and move on with God in a personal, intimate way. When Jesus said something to his disciples one time, it was kind of kind of interesting to me. It was like he said, you know, I have many things to say to you now, but you're not ready to receive them. And I thought about that. You know, I thought, man, I wonder if there are things I'm not ready to hear from God. Are there things you're not ready to listen to God about? When I considered that, I I made a foolish prayer that said, basically, kind of like Solomon, you know, Solomon's prayer. And I wanted to know God in all his ways, and I wanted to follow him all my days and do all the things, you know, that would be wise and smart. And So God took me at my word, and I've gone through some pretty crazy experiences, you know, that... I like to call it the Solomonic, uh, the, the Solomonic path to wisdom, <laughs> which means simply that, you know, it's not hard knocks because you know nobody's really had hard knocks, not in America, but it is a challenging life sometimes when you go through near death experiences and lots of personal failures or experiences that God changes and rearranges your personality and teaches you things about people and about life, about you, and about me. I think that's why we have discipleship. I think that's why we talk to God personally, so that He can do that, that He would be that real with us, that He would care enough to help us to change. I like that about God, because He doesn't leave us the same, but rather... Even in today's reading, I find myself pondering and thinking soberly about the things that I've gone through and the things that I still yet want to learn, the things I want to be ready for, you know, kind of like ready to give to every man an answer for the hope that lies within me, ready to maybe, you know, whenever someone says something to me about, you know, their anger that they feel over some social issue or some personal angst over some circumstantial situation that they're going through that not only can I relate the facts to them, but that I can touch their heart in some personal, intimate way that Jesus has done for me. And maybe he's done for you. When I think of it that way, then I think, man, if it whatever it takes, I think it's worth it. I think it's worth being able to give to every man an answer for the hope that lies within me that if I have to go through all these challenges and frustrations, aggravations, even pounding my fist upon the wall, then maybe it's worth it if I can help someone else out of the same situation that they're going through, the same deception or misconception that they have about God. Vision by, by personal character. Come up hither and I will show thee things. Revelation 4.1 An elevated mood can only come out of an elevated habit of personal character. If in the externals of your life you live up to the highest you know, God will continually say to you, Friend, come up higher. 
come up hither. The golden rule in temptation is go higher. When you get higher up, you face other temptations and characteristics. Satan uses the strategy of elevation in temptation, and God does the same, but the effect is different. When the devil puts you into an elevated place, he makes you screw your idea of holiness beyond what flesh and blood could ever bear. Oh, I will give you all the kingdoms of the world if you'll just bow down and worship me. I will make you famous. I will increase your ministry. I will give you what your flesh desires. But it is It is a spiritual acrobatic performance. You are just poised and dare not move, but when God elevates you by His grace into the heavenly places, instead of finding a pinnacle to cling to, worrying about what the devil's going to do, you find a great tableland where it is easy to move, a plateau, an experience of enjoying God as He is. Compare this week in your spiritual history with the same last year and see how God has called you up higher, lifted you up from where you were. We all have been brought to see from a higher standpoint. I find whenever I take a bigger picture view, I see sometimes how individuals will look only at just what's ever right in front of their face instead of looking and extending outward what they're doing, thinking, seeing, or believing. So I like to say, imagine if whatever you're thinking or doing had to go beyond this moment. Will it apply yesterday, today, and forever? Because that's what your answer should be. In my personal discipleship, I began to look at extending everything outward is the way I say it. What about you know this idea you have? Does it fit? in eternity? Does it work out in 10 years from now the same way it works out today? Because if it doesn't, you might be just kind of reacting then acting according to the Word of God. Never let God give you one point of truth which you do not instantly live up to. Always work it out. Keep in the light of it. Whatever it is that God is teaching you at that moment, live it. Love it. Learn it. Apply it. Make it a part of your being. Give it the chance and opportunity to really kind of gestate or become fruitful in your life. That it begins to kind of come out in your actions and words. Maybe even your direction that you're going or sometimes your perspective that you look at. I know for me, I'm always kind of evaluating, you know, like, well, not just what would Jesus do, but what does Jesus want me to do in this situation? Because... I might not be up to the standard of Jesus, so Jesus might do differently than I do, but I know that right now he has me where he wants me, so he must have something for me to do in a certain way, the way he wants me to, in this circumstance I'm in. Growth in grace is measured not by the facts that you have gone back, but that you have insight into where you are spiritually. You've heard God say, come up hither, not to you personally, but to the insight of your character. Often, I think that's more important to me to be truthful about my relationship with God when I'm mad at Him than it is for me to be thinking to deny the madness that I'm angry about something or to deny that I don't understand something. Sometimes I think it's more important to recognize that God cares about truth and He wants you to be real about it. He wants you to say, hey, you know what? Maybe I don't get the point. Maybe I don't understand this. Maybe I am beating my head up against the wall. But God, I'm being honest about it, so show me where I'm at, off. Show me where I'm at. Show me what I need to do in order to hit the hammer on the nail, so to speak. And you know, I think that not only does God honor that, but God blesses that. I think He 
chooses to only teach us and instruct us when we're willing to, quite frankly, admit how we feel about a given situation and circumstance. To be truthful, then he can use us in a way to explain the facts of the situation. Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? God has to hide from us what he does until by personal character we get to the place where he can reveal it. That to me is the most important part. Am I really willing to be changed to the place where I can receive what he wants to tell me? That I can deal with it? That I am making it a part of my life? That I care enough? to share what I learn and be a part of someone else's life in caring how they react to it. Because you see, if they do, and if I do what God tells me to, then I think that uh, it's kind of like having a hammer, you know? If I had a hammer, if I had a good hammer, <laughs> I'd hammer in the morning. I'd hammer an even. I'd hammer out a warning. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But no, if I had a hammer, I'd hammer the nail on the head. I wouldn't go around beating my thumb. I wouldn't be dumb enough to stick my fingers up there and start smacking away. But I would hit the hammer on the head. I would nail that sucker literally to the wall and say, Okay, God, I get it. Maybe I'm not ready to understand all you're doing, but maybe I can understand what you want me to do today. So help me today to understand what you want me to know, and then help me to go with what little bit that I get the point and understand. Because if I do, God, then I kind of expect you to pin it into my heart. Make it real to my life. Make it part of my utmost for your uttermost. Because that's what I want to do, God. I don't want to play games. <laughs> I want to serve you. I want to know you. I want to love you.